Hi guys, welcome to the big show. This is Mark Adamo for Loop TV and in this video we're going to be showing you how to make the big white noise rise aka the whoosh, the elevator, the smoke machine or as my friends in Germany like to say Ah, Nebel machine does sie machen, is sehr cool and you all know you want them to be saying that about your smoke machines too so let's get down to it let's show you how to make the big white noise rise okay so let's begin with the theory of what we need so to make a big white noise rise you only really need a white noise oscillator so you don't have to worry about three oscillators and a modulation all that not at all just switch on your noise uh, put the amp full here, route it to filter one, and let's put the color all the way up to the full spectrum. There we go. Let's turn all these effects off so you're hearing just the raw sound of uh, oscillator here. And like I said, we've routed it to filter one. We need a bit of filter to make the rising sound. Now, all these things sound like rises and energetic elevation because of the direction they move from. So if you move from low to high, as a general theory, you'll create an exciting direction to your sonic event. So here we go. Essentially, that's just raising the cutoff of the filter. So that's a low pass filter and we're going from low to high there and we've added fair chunk of resonance there to give it some tone. Let's hear that once more. And now without the resonance, let's turn that off. As you can hear that that's kind of, uh, yeah, less squealy. This one's got a bit more of a squeal to it when you add the resonance in. Makes it more tonal. Both are usable, enjoy them. Right, next in the chain here, we have a bit of chorus effect. As you can hear, that, that makes it more spatial, gives it some stereo width, and generally helps it to sit in the mix a bit. There's no rules about how much chorus or how little chorus you have, just put in whatever you like. So, what we need to do is we need to automate this filter cutoff going up here. Now we can do that quite easily using uh, just a regular automation here, which we have set up there. Let's go there, right, filter parameter one, bang, straight up like that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So like that, we added the drums and the crash just to give you an idea of how it's going there. So we've done that. That's easy to do that. Some people like to use an envelope and just assign that to the filter. And uh, you can also use an LFO, you know, use uh, a ramp shaped LFO like that and make sure your modulation is going upside down, negative to make up for it. Instead of it going this kind of way, we want it to go upwards negative modulation. So we can do that with that, drawing it in nice and easily like so. So what else can we do with this? Well, we can also add some reverb, make it sit in the mix as well as the chorus. And uh, we can also dial in more resonance like we said before. And uh, another little trick which I like to do is to create that last little bit of dynamic action is to add another EQ in here. As you can see, I've added a little bit of mid-range there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep this up as well, right near the end, to give it an extra little bit of elevation. And I've already drawn that in into this lane here. So you're going to see this. Keep your eye on this one. You're going to see this one rise up as well from this point here. Now the idea is we're going to let this one rise up quite a bit and once this is kind of like peaking out there with the maximum frequencies this low sweep EQ, this high pass EQ here from the EQ synth here 
is going to take it to that extra level. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, we like that. Right, so you could do plenty more of that. Um, you know, some people like to say, not use the EQ, use a bandpass filter. That can sound pretty good too. Remember your band, band width, if you have it nice and skinny or fat, you'll get more of a pronounced effect when it's skinny. But dial it into taste. Okay, so that sounds good too. Now, we could do some other little tricks as well with this filter. We can give it a little wobble as such. So how about we do that? We put it in sync here, give it some uh, 16th note synchronization, put a little bit in there, see how that sounds. Yeah, I wanted that EQ in there, you can see. I like that. Oh yeah, now we're getting a little bit cooking. So another little kind of trick that people like to do is say, let's take the sink off here. And uh, we do this manually first to give you an idea. And then we'll add the finesse with the automation. So we're going to give this like a, a little acceleration spin here by increasing the rate manually so it starts really slow and then speeds up as it goes along so let's hear how that sounds okay so now we can just draw this in manually if we want add a little latch Oops, go there And uh, yeah, I just know what I want, so I'm going to draw it in like so. Start around there, let's get fun. Okay, and then the final little trick here is using the amount, the envelope depth here or amp for the amount of LFO we're going to apply to the filter there. So I'm going to give that a little thing so it's drawn in. And so what this means is I can increase the amount of depth as it gets in to elevate. Remember that. It's all about adding more, more, higher, faster, deeper. Okay, and one more thing, maybe even want to uh, start playing about with the resonance amount as well. Basics and how to make the big whoosh. Feel free to add your own echoes, reverbs, anything else you like, modulation effects and more. Uh, look out for more videos, we're going to have some more inside info on how to make those elevation effects. See you next time.